Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be doing a review of the Intel DP55SB motherboard. Uh, now, this review took a little bit of, like, delay because I went away for 4th of July weekend and stuff like that. But yeah, anyway, um, motherboard itself, I've been using it for, well today's the 13th, or no, the 12th. Um, and I got the whole Intel kit on the 14th, and I think I built it on the 19th. So it's been just shy of two months I've been using this motherboard now. Uh, it's a micro ATX motherboard that supports the 1156 socket, uh, supports uh, four sticks of RAM up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, so four gigabytes a stick, supports two PCI Express slots, uh, the first being 16x and the second being an 8x, and it's actually physically a smaller slot. Um, and uh, it actually has Bluetooth on it, which is kind of helpful. Not entirely sure why it has Bluetooth, but it has Bluetooth. Back of the motherboard has, um, I believe, eight USB ports on it, which is really helpful. Fiber in and fiber out. Uh, it has a back to BIOS button, which is incredibly, incredibly helpful for overclocking. Because anybody that's ever done overclocking, you know, you screw up something like you know the clock doesn't work and it just crashes or it doesn't even post you have to reset the CMOS now some newer boards have an external CMOS reset button or some slightly newer boards have an internal CMOS reset button but um, other than that you would need to actually like take out the battery or switch the CMOS reset jumper this one the back to BIOS you press it and it goes right back to the BIOS and doesn't actually reset any of the settings so all the other numbers you've changed are still there. It just defaults, loads in, and then tells you what you had. And I must have pushed that button like 150 times during the overclocking process. Incredibly helpful button. Uh, it also has a um, uh, eSATA port right on the back of it, which is always good. 7.1 surround sound out through 3.5 millimeter jacks. Uh, one Ethernet port, some of the newer uh, i7 boards and stuff have two, but it's a micro ATX, so it only has one. Um, it's overall a really good board, especially for the fact that it's a micro ATX. Uh, micro ATX boards with SLI aren't all too common. Of course, it's not 1616, it's 168, but still, if you've got two cards and you need to stick them in a small case, this is a good board for that. Um, the board supporting memory, it can support 16 gigabytes of memory, as I said, but it doesn't really like high-speed memory. Like, uh, I have 2.4 gigahertz memory, and we can only get it running stably at 1333. Um, we couldn't even get it at 1600, which is 800 megahertz below its full potential. We can get it to 1600, but then as soon as you run a memory test or a CPU test or something that's actually memory intensive, it would crash. So uh, if you're looking for a board to stick uh, a really high-end memory like 2.4 gigahertz on, this probably isn't the best choice. Now, 16 megahertz or 1600 megahertz memory might still work if you have one that works good. Uh, I've never actually tried other DDR3 with it, so I can't exactly just to give a huge uh, explanation on that. But uh, all I know is that my 2.4 gigahertz memory doesn't work with it. Uh, yeah, but the the motherboard itself is really nice. Uh, it's a nice layout. It's got really good uh, uh, power uh, consumption on it, and the uh, regulators are nicely placed. Nothing really gets in the way of anything else. Um, you can actually have a really big cooler on it, and it doesn't hit the RAM or anything, unless you have some weird one that just goes, like, straight out. If you actually have, like, a real cooler that's, like, you know, when design was thinking, hmm, this is going to be big, let's leave some room for the RAM, it's not one of those ones where it's CPU and the RAM's right here. So it's a really good motherboard. Definitely nice for a lower end, uh, small case gaming rig, like for a LAN party rig or something like that. Uh, even for like a higher end media center, which is nice because it's got that Bluetooth stuck on it, which is really the only reason I can think that they really have that, is, you know, you might use this for a media center and then you might want Bluetooth. But uh, I use the Bluetooth with my cell phone and stuff all the time. Um, definitely... Uh, it gets dwarfed in my huge case. The Antec 1200 is like this wide, and then there's the motherboard, my cooler, my video card, and then just huge RAM. So you can't even really see the motherboard. 
but it's a very good motherboard to suggest it to anybody who's going to be doing like LAN partying and stuff like that where you want a small case to be moved around a lot or even just like a small quiet case. Uh, of course with the uh, 1156 you can stick on an i3 or an i5 right on the board and that's definitely a pretty good board for the pretty low price of uh, 170 bucks uh, considering that it's a uh, Intel Extreme board. So definitely worth it if you uh, actually need a micro ATX otherwise you'd want to go to a higher up end board uh, size wise. But yeah, so that's just about it. Thank you everybody for watching. Please be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe and I will see you all later.